what is going on people tunji again from caesar graphics welcome to my channel and um this is what we're going to be doing today okay and um to achieve this tutorial we are going to be using three different applications to do this so we're going to be using um we're going to be using photoshop we're going to be using illustrator and we are going to be using cinema 4d to um work on this tutorial I actually got this tutorial from a member of my telegram group actually this is not the exact artwork but it's similar to it so he asked me if i can do a tutorial on this so i said yes okay so without any further ado let's jump into today's tutorial all right so here we are now in um, adobe illustrator so i already typed my text i went straight to object and then click on expand all right to break it from text to um, objects and from there i clicked on the weld um, button down here all right so if you can see this option i would advise you go to window and then look for pathfinder from the list of um, option here which is this so once you click on this you see this um, option here i'm actually using adobe illustrator 2019 so then i save this as the lower lower version of um, illustrator now if you don't save it as the lower version of illustrator you won't be able to use this um, in your cinema 4d project so i'm going to show you how i did it so i click on file and i click on save as and um, on the save as option all right so this is the text as so i just click on live party here and i click on save and save that already exists but if this is your first time of saving you're not going to see the option all right so i under the version so this is the one i choose here so if you don't choose this option your cinema 4d won't be able to locate this file so i choose 18 and then i say okay all right now okay so let's go straight to cinema 4d i am now on cinema 4d right here so i'm going to click on file now and select match so, so i am going to locate it now lights so this is it right here so i'm just going to click on this and i'll click um, open i'll just do here is i'm just going to click on okay uh, you can see anything on our canvas so to make this be at the center of, the, of your work area so what you just do is to come down here and change this to zero and zero and hit enter and now you see we have our text Then I'll just collect this. Then I'll go straight to this side here and then look for connect, which is this. Then I'll go, I'm going to drag this and drop in here like so. Then the next thing I'll do is to click on this button here and I have this as um, a connect object. So everything is now together like one family. So we are going to drag this and put in a uh, in an extrude knob here so i'm going to click on extrude knob here and i'm going to drag this and drop in here like so uh, a rectangle spline which is this and i am going to um just scale this down like so this in like so All right, so what we're trying to do now is I'm trying to um, create the uh, this line around my text here. So I'm just going to um, uh, I'm going to drag this out. I'm going to make a copy of this um, connect. I'm going to just give it a name. So I double click on it and I'll just call it Light Party. Okay. So I'm going to make a copy of this by putting down control and drag down to make a copy. Then I'll call us this and call this LP, uh, which means light party. I'm sure you already know that. And I'll look for sweep down. All right. So we are using sweep down to do the um, the stroke around the style two. All right. So I'm going to um, put this two. All right. I'm going to put this two on this sweep knob like this okay and um, it looks as if my 
rectangle shape is too big and that's why everything is looking like this so i'm just going to scale this down like so all right then i need to increase the height so i'm just going to push this up like this all right good then um the next thing i'm going to do i'm just going to give this a name so it's time for us to draw All right, so it's time for us to draw our light bulbs. So to draw the light bulb, I'm gonna click on this icon so I can go to the front view of my um, canvas, all right? So I am going to make this, this is the front view here. So I'm gonna click on this and um, I'll have this. Then I'll use the Bezier, the pen tool here. Actually it was um, Bezier tool before, but it changed the name. So I'm just gonna click, I'll make my first point here. Maybe I should zoom in so I can see what I'm doing. Oops, sorry. So I'm going to move this here, like so, and I'm going to make my first point from here, and I'll hand it somewhere here, and I'll put this here, all right? Then, as you can see, I have this, um, um, this path going with the, um, my mouse, so I need to break that. So to break it, because I need to draw the next um, stroke. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to hit escape on my keyboard and then it goes off. So I'm going to go here and I'll do the same thing. All right. So as you can see, escape again. And I'm going to come here. Now, so I'm going to um, go back to the um, normal design view, which is this. We have to bring in, um, we need to, so we're going to bring in the cylinder um, shape now. And um, this should be set to um, plus um, Z. And I'm going to rotate this. So I'm going to go to my scale, adjustment two. And I'm going to scale this down. So just come back here and uh, okay so what i'm trying to do is i want to use this to see this to set the size to set the size of my light bulb so i'm just going to position this here now so you can see it's looking too big so i'm going to come here now and i'm going to drag this down all right i think i am fine with uh, this okay and uh, i'm going to just move this up Yes. So let's see. Yeah, thank you. This is nice. This is not bad. All right. So, but uh, one other thing again, I notice uh, my, you know, my spline here, they are not, um, they're not looking nice. So I need to, um, you know, work on them to make them look the way I want. So I'm gonna make this big again. So let's see the ones that I noticed that I need to work on. So like this one here, I need to work on it. So I'm just going to go to the um, uh, point, uh, the points um, adjustment here and click on this tool. All right, the light selection tool, and I'm going to just put this down. Like so, all right, this should go out. Let's go back to our normal design view. Okay, so let's bring in the mock wrap, the um, the cloner. It's called cloner. So the mock graph cloner, which is this, and I am going to put this in here, like so. Okay, then I'll click on this and change this to objects. 
all right so our object is going to be the spline that we drew which is this so i'm going to drag this excuse me i'm going to drag this and drop in here like so now as you can see this is looking this is not looking the way we want it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to change the number of counts all right and um you know what let's just leave the number of count for now and i'm going to change um this to vertex yeah it's vertex and under the transform to under the transform option still on the cloner um uh, cloner here i'm going to just change this to 90 right and yeah so i'm going to go back to object now uh, let's see what's going on here so this guy is here i'm not giving me the result i want so what we are going to do is i'm going to make a copy i'm going to duplicate the ones that are not facing the direction i want uh the direction i want and then change them to the way that i want them to look so how do we do that first i am going to make a copy all right of my cloner and my spline so i'm going to hold down control and click and drag so i'm going to call this spline two okay so i'm going to select my cloner now and i'll drag this inside here so now we have two cloners with two spline of the same look so what we're going to do now is we are going to take out the um, ones that are not facing the direction we want from the um, spline that is facing the direction we want and um, i'm going to show you how to do that so let's take this as let's take the first one as the one facing the direction we want so i'm going to just double click on this to hide them all right and um so i'm gonna take i'm gonna delete all these parts all right from the one that is not facing the direction we want so i'm going to um hide this again and um, i'm gonna hide the cloner so i can see my and i will hide this but before i do that let's just make this video so i'll know the ones i need to take out so i need to take out the l the g all right the some side of the some part of the p and some part of the a some part of the half so I'm, I'm sure you get what I'm trying to do before um, at the end of this um, part. Alright, so I'm going to um, click on this, click on this, I'm going to hide this. Alright, I'm going to hide this. So I'm just going to delete this. Hit delete. Alright, let's make it visible again. I know the ones that are not facing the way we want it. So I notice the G is not facing the way I want it. So I'm just going to take now make sure you're on this two, on this um, option here before you do this because if you don't it won't work so I'm just going to make this visible again let's see let's go down to the P so I'll hide this and just take out this part to delete again all right so uh let's so let's work on the second spline now which is this so i am going to um hide this now and make this visible make this visible all right so i'm going to take out the one facing us on this one so that we can so as to be able to change this to what this one looks like so this one now I'm going to take them out because I already have them looking the way I want it on the first cloner, which is this. So I'm going to hide this now. Go back to this to make sure you're on this line um, to here. And I'm just going to click on this and click on this and hit delete. All right. I need to hide this. I need to hide that so as to be able to know uh, if my um, if what I'm doing is actually working. So I'm going to make this visible again. And um, I need to take it out from the H. So, um, yes, so for the H. And
Oh, I think we're making sense now. So I'm going to make this visible again. So, no, don't let me get you confused. So I'm going to hide this. All right. So you guys can see what I'm doing. So on this one, now we are going to change the transform, uh, the rotation on the P. So I'm just going to hit 90 here and hit enter. Now you see it's facing the direction we want it now. And I'm going to make this visible so as to bring in the other um, clone. So you now you see we are making sense now, and um, so I'm going to um, zoom in. All right, now like I said previously, that every part of the um, of um, this plane where we have the point is where the cloner is going to use to set our light. All right, and that's the reason why I choose the vertex option which is this here so we're able to do that because i choose this option so now it's time for us to start adding adding more lights so to do that i'm going to first select the first plane all right which is this and i'll click on this option here now i am going to just um i need to hide this all right um, let's see okay so let's work with the l for so the l should be this so i'm just going to hide this so, I be, so as to be able to see my spline and i'll select this now the first point here um and i'm going to just um, right click and choose knife line and uh, court sorry and i need to check this option that says single line all right don't forget to check this option so i'm just going to say single line all right then i'm just going to draw uh a cut here now you see i have a new point here now what was going to happen if i make this visible again you see we have a light where we have that new point so i'm going to hide this again and hide another one here and make this visible now you see we're beginning to have more light bulb on the air all right and uh, one good thing about this again is that you can as well you know change the position of your um the point so if i click on this now i can just push this down now as i'm pushing this down the cloner is also making the adjustment for me so if i push this up now you see i'm adjusting i'm moving the light bulb where i want it to be so if i want to change this one i'll just click on this and i'm just going to push this where i want it to be so i don't want to have too much light on this so i'm, I'm okay with the number of light i have on the l and then let's go straight to the eye so let's see which of the color is um, um, handling the high. So I'm just going to um, hide this. Okay, so it means this is it. Is this one? So I'm just going to click on this, hide this, and then right, just click any point, and then right click, and then select knife again, and I'm just going to cut to add a, a point here, and I'll make this visible. Add another point here this visible. So let's do the same thing we did with the L. I'm just going to select this and I'll push this. So This time I'm just gonna select here. Um, I need to be on my front view so I will be able to see the progress of my adjustments. I'm just gonna position this here. And then this will be this. Here and uh, 
just uh, I'm going to double click on this so as to bring out the color the material uh, option here and um, for this one I'm going to make this 10 all right and I'm going to make this uh, 68 and this should be 98 I guess yeah then um, this should be for inside which is this all right so i'm gonna make a new material again now uh, this time i'll double click on it again and then this should be 42 42 uh, this should be 13 and this should be 9 and this would be for the um edges all right the, the stroke of our text so i'm just going to drag this and drop on this all right so you can as well you know add your uh, material to your object here okay so the next thing the la the, the next one is to now uh, create the material for a light bulb all right so but this time i'm not going to use the color option here i'm going to go to the luminance all right so i actually want this to look like lights okay so this one should be 42 this should be zero why this should be 80. all right and um yeah so i'm gonna close this and we're gonna apply this to the cloner like so or oh, better still let's just apply it to the cylinder shade of color I'm looking at for the luminance. So I'm gonna push this here. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna close this. Nice. So I'm gonna open this and apply it um, here. Now, there's something I want to do. I need to put these two guys in a group. So I'm just going to select this and push this up. All right. So I held and shift to select the two um, um, objects. So I'm going to just select the two of them and hit Alt G to put them in the group. So I'll just call this lights. Light bulbs. Okay. So uh, now, if I render this, all right. If I click on if I click on the render button, you see nothing happen. All right, you can't really see any difference. So what I'm going to do now is to bring in uh, a sky. So next thing I'll do is to bring in the sky, um, dude here, and I'm going to apply this to this. Like so, so if I render this now, all right. So this is what we have now. Now nothing is showing. Can't really see any difference, but there's something I'm gonna I'm gonna apply to this now that will really give us that look that we want. So I am going to go to the settings here and I'll right click here and bring in global illumination. All right, and um, I'll set this to I mean I'll set this to uh, preview, and this should be light mapping. All right. Yeah, mapping is fine. Okay, so we need to do some little tweaks so as to make the shadow pop out more and uh, make this look more real. I don't want the sky to be visible, all right? So I need to hide the sky. So that's the first thing we need to do before we now start adding other um, things to the back. But I'm gonna make sure I explain all the moves I'm making so as to make so as to, to you know make you find it easy to understand anytime you're working on a project like this. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is to hide this. So I'm going to come to the tags option here and I'm going to go to um, cinema 4D tags and I'm going to bring in the composite tag here. Okay, then I'm going to say scene by camera should go off. So my sky is still there, but it won't be visible. 
yeah so i'm going to go to the setting again and then under the setting i'm going to go to light map um sorry all right and i'm going to change this to 100 now why am i making this on 100 i want to be able to see the shadow higher in the figure the stronger your shadow is going to be so i'm going to just close this and um, there's one other thing i need to add here to the to my luminance which is um, under illumination i need to check the gi area option all right and i'm going to make this 200 all right and um, yeah so why i made this 200 is so that the effect of my light here to make it bounce on the object behind it all right so the concept here is to make it look more like a real light effect so i'm going to just close this now and i'm going to render this again okay sorry i just realized that my um camera is blocking the, the material tab here so check this out now uh, as you can see now you see we're beginning to give life to the um light party team and um now you see i'm beginning to see this shadow effect here and then you look if you look at this side i'm seeing the um effect of the shadow from this h um on this um t here and um so uh i'm still not satisfied with the look so there's one other thing i need to add for the last time and uh, we will um go to the camera part and render this so i'm going to click on this now i'm going to right click on this now and you know add what we call ambient occlusion now so do is to add more shadow to this now but the disadvantage of this is that it's going to kill the you know the glow effect on the light bulb but no problem when we get to photoshop i'm going to add those um light effects the glow effect back to the light so i am going to just um close this now and i'm going to render this again so i'm going to add my camera to this now and um i'll change this uh, to um to telephoto all right so i'll make this visible then um I'll push this out like so okay and um, yeah so if you look at it if you look at um, uh, my cinema 4d screen here you see I have this line here all right you notice that this part is looking darker and this is looking lighter there's a line separating them so what um, cinema 4d is telling me is that this side where I have this light um, gray is my render area so I must make sure that um my project should not go out of this um line here so i'm just going to push this down like so now you see i have the same um dark gray at the bottom here so i'm just going to position this here like so all right and i'll go to my settings now and on that i'll go straight to save then i'll go to i'll you know click on this button to look it so i'm just going to hit save I'm just going to I'll click on the alpha channel here and I'll click on uh, straight alpha and separate alpha. I'm going to explain this too after I render this um, project. All right, the straight alpha and the separate alpha. And uh, what else do we need again? Every other option is fine. And I'm going to just click on close now. And I'm going to click on this button here to render it. okay so here we are in photoshop now and uh, so let's create a new document so i'm gonna go to file and i'll click on new all right so i'm gonna change this to pixels and um, i'll make this um, 700. 700 300 is fine for me and i'll call this um, lp saga actually i'm just going to click create and um yeah so here we are now so let's start bringing in our content so um, drop like so all right so this is it right here now remember when we were you know when we were planning to export this under the export settings 
If you remember clearly that I mentioned that I was going to explain what the straight alpha means and the separate alpha. Alright, so this guy here is the straight alpha option that I check because I want to be able to take this um, team, right? This, um, I need to remove this so as to not change the color. So I want to be able to take this away from the background. So instead of me coming to my um, Marquis selection tool or my pen tool to crop this out, I already have a straight alpha here that I can easily hold down control or command for Mac users and then create a Marquis while I click on the uh, alpha um, thumbnail under the channel tab. So if you can't find the channel tab in your Photoshop project, simply go to Windows and then look for channels here. All right, so this is it right here. So once you click on this, it gives you this tab here. So I'm gonna have already click on control and click to create a Marquis selection. So I'll go back to my layer panel here all right now all right so i'm just going to hit the command j on my keyboard to take this out from its um original background and now if you see if i hide this layer now the original layer you see i have this guy separated from the original background so let's start adding some little effects um to this uh team here so i'm just going to go to filter first and i'll go to sharpen I'll select unsharp mask all right then what does the unsharp mask does it yeah, i always do this to you know to push out the details on the on my project all right so if you notice when i had when i clicked on the unsharp mask the part where i have shadow on my project pop up more and then the part where i have um, the lighter part also it made it balance so i'm going to just click on okay with to make sure i'm on the right layer which is this and i'll go to select um, menu here and select uh, color range so i'm going to just um you know pick this the lights all right so once i click on this it will automatically pick the other lights for me and i'm just going to click ok like so so now as you can see we have my quiz selection around the light bulbs so i'm going to create a new layer now i'll hold on alt and click to create a new layer so i'm going to call this glow all right and i'll select ok now the color i'm going to use is already here so but just in case you want to use the same color i'm using for this project simply copy this code just, just type this code out and then paste it in this field in your photoshop project and then you have the same color i'm using so i'm just going to click ok now and i am going to hold down alt and click on the backspace to add the color to the glow layer and i'm going to hit command d or ctrl d on my keyboard to deselect and i'll go to filter blur and select gaussian blur all right so once i click on gaussian blur you see if i push this out you see i'm beginning to see this glow effect on my light layer all right and i'm just gonna hit okay now the next thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna make a copy of this i'm gonna drag this and drop like so and um uh, yeah for the one below i'm just going to go to my blend mode and choose um vivid light i guess so if I click on vivid light, you see I'm beginning to see this um, this strong glow effect around my lights, alright, which is what I want, but I don't want it to be this strong. So I'm just going to come here and then dial this down to about this level here, and I think I'm okay with this. Next, I'm going to shift select the three layers, alright, you know what, we need to give this a name, so I'm just going to call this LP layer. Shift select the three layers now. now move to uh, make sure you're always on your move to when you're trying to move um, content to another uh, document. So I'm just gonna drag this and then go straight to the new um, uh, project document that I created. And I'm gonna convert this to a smart object, all right, so that when I'm increasing the size of the layer and I'm increasing it, I'm not gonna lose the quality. So I'm going to put this in a folder and I'll call this um, LP Alright, then uh, I'm going to scale this down so I'm going to hit Command T or Control T on my keyboard and scale this down like so Alright, so I'm just going to do it like so and position it here Now it's time for us to start bringing our images now all the images I am using for this project, I got everything from, um, you know, I 
I searched Google and you know luckily for me I was able to get another new site where I can get free pictures online so I'm gonna leave the link in the description below so you guys can also um, go to the website to get free images then I'm going to duplicate this and this this should be above the layers so I'm going to just hide it for now then I'm going to click on this click on the T of my T on my keyboard and rotate this and I'm going to flip this All right, so I'm trying to cover this white space here so I'm just going to push this up to about this point All right then I should select the two layers I should select the two layers now and I'll hit command T or control T on my keyboard and scale it big like so oops actually that's a part of the plan so I'm just gonna scale this bit what's going on oh my anchor point is not in the right position so I'm gonna hit command T now and uh, I'm going to scale this big like so alright I'm trying to hide these dupes here so I'm just gonna push this up to about this point uh, I think I'm okay with this nice so for this one i'm just gonna push this down okay then i'll make a new layer again for this one i'll call it um roof all right then i'm just gonna apply brush so simply color for many parts of this and then i select the brush too now make sure you want the soft round brush and i'm just gonna brush like so all right then i'll bring in the second image which is this all right and yeah i'm just gonna scale this big real big and i'll press on this here okay and i'll put this in this brush here so i'm gonna hold on alt and then make sure my mouse is in between the two layers and i'll click to put this in the roof um, glow uh glow layer so I'll just go this big so right I'm just gonna put this here so don't worry about these guys I'm gonna take them out alright so um this one we need to change the color so I'm just going to um click on this um the upper upper um layer and then I'm gonna go to the adjustment panel uh, the adjustment tab here yeah, sorry and if you don't have the adjustment tab simply go to windows and then look for it here which is this so i'm going to click on the um hue and um and heal saturation and tab here yeah, adjustment here and i'll click on this icon here and i'll sample the color that i want to change here which is this all right because i still want to have this yellow um outfit on these guys but the purple i don't want it so i'm just going to push this down like this so as you can see it's only affecting the purple and um the shade of color i'm actually looking for is something around red right so i think i'm beginning to see red now I think I have right here. all right so this is a little bit close to it and now um, this should be here like so and um, i'm going to push it on this here yeah i think i like this so i'm just going to position i'm going to stop here all right now i don't want it to be too reddish okay so let's do the same thing for this guy here so i'm look, going to um make another uh hue adjustment again uh, so i'm going to click on this one yep and i'll click here and i'll sample the color from here all right now i don't want this to apply to all the layers so what i'm going to do is i am going to just click on this icon here to say i want this to apply to just only this layer here and um i already click on the colors so i'm just going to push this down and then change the hue to the same red that i picked the other time and i'm just going to yes i think i like it this way all right so um the next thing i'm going to do is um let's have the color um, balance adjustment so i'm just going to click on this so for my mid tone i'm just going to push that to something around this uh, 
figure here now you see everything is beginning to look uh like one family already so it's beginning to blend so i'm just going to come here and choose the shadow now do the same thing to the shadow all right i'm just gonna add this to the shadow and um for the background i'm gonna add um i'm gonna add i'm gonna sample color from here sorry i need to create a layer first new layer first and i'll call this brush So I'm just going to um, hit the B, and then I'm just going to brush. Oops, sorry. I'm just supposed to be on red, so I'm just going to pick a color from here and I'll brush because I don't want those guys to be visible. And let's see if this is going to make a uh, team pop up. Okay, nice. So, um, yeah. So the next thing we are going to do is I am going to. Um, make this brighter so i'm just going to click on the curve adjustments so i don't want this to apply to just this layer and i'll push this out push this out like so yeah then i'm going to sample a color from here but before i do that i need to uh bring in my gradient map my gradient adjustments i'm gonna bring this in like so and um yeah so i'll click on this now before i click on that i need to make sure i'm on this icon here the gradient icon not the mask icon so i'm gonna click on this now and um i'll first of all sample a color from here with this so I'll pick this color from this side and i'll hit okay and this side i'll pick the lighter parts and i'll hit okay Okay, so I'm going to just make this a little bit more darker, like so. Alright, and I'll hit OK. And I'll say OK. So my blend mode should be soft lights. My blend mode should be soft lights. Yep, so I'm going to reduce the opacity just a little bit. Alright, just a little bit. Nice. So just like so all right then um i'll bring in the color lookup adjustments so i'm going to change this to crispy one all right and uh, it should apply to all the layers yeah so i'm just going to scale this i'm going to dial this down about this option yep then um I'll bring in uh we need to add noise to this so i'm going to hold on alt and i'll call this noise so i held on alt and click on the uh, new layer icon here i'll click ok now for my foreground color i am going to use gray 80 80 80 so i'm going to click ok and i'm going to apply the color to this and this should be set to soft light again all right then i'll go to filter noise hard noise okay and um yeah so i'm just going to increase this just a little bit yes i think i like it this way so i'm just, just going to go okay so let's just see how far we've gone okay so i think i like it like this then um so let's bring in the next thing which is um the uh the light effect so i'm going to just sample a color from here again i'll create a new layer and i'm going to hit the brush tool and this time i'm just going to brush once and i'll scale this big like so and i'll push this here and i'll change this to screen all right so i'll scale it big a little bit yeah then um i'm gonna make a copy of it again then i'll push this up go here but i need to make my um team come out more better so i'm going going to uh, make a new i'm gonna duplicate this sorry all right and i'll scale this down 
scroll this down just a little bit. All right. Then I'll hit the command L or control L on my keyboard to bring out the level adjustments. And I'm just gonna make it more darker. Sorry, should go this way. Yeah. Okay, cool. Then um I'll make a new layer again. So for this one I'll call it blue glow. Alright. So this one is just to add um to just make it pop up more. So I'm just going to um, pick blue here like so. Nice. And I'll select the brush tool and I'll click. And I'm going to scale this. I'll position this somewhere here. Alright, I'll make a copy again. And I'll scale this down. So, alright, so I need to type my text. I'm going to just click on this and then. Or before we do the typing of the text, I'm going to make match visible of all the layers. Alright, and I'll go to filter, then camera roll filter. So, for this, I'm just going to increase the exposure, alright, and down the white down, like so. For the shadow, we need to make that more um, darker, like so. And for uh, clarity, I'm going to push that up, for the edge, just a little bit, alright. Then sharpen, I'm going to sharpen it just a little bit not too much all right and then yeah i think i need to add a little bit of yellow to this so i'm going to go to the um this guy here and um, for the shadow which is this i'm just going to push this to where i have yellow so i'm holding out alt now while i drag that and i'm going to just push this to this point like so So I'm gonna hit OK. I think I like it this way. Yeah, so this is the before and this is the after. So now I am going to click here and just type. Oh, yeah.
Okay, guys. Um, yeah, one last thing. I realized that the uh, the color of red on my pro on this project is too much, so I need to dial this down. So I'm going to select the um, hue adjustments. All right, and um, I'll pick the color that I want to reduce, um, like this one here. I don't want it, so I'm just going to click on this and I'll reduce the saturation alright so I'm just going to push this down alright I'm going to push this down to about this point okay so I think I like it this way so uh, to this I'm going to say bye bye alright so if you like this video don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and um, I'll see you guys in my next tutorial